Hi everyone, Roy here. We're on our way to Detroit, to Belle Isle, to plant, uh, lay out and plant Pete out off garden. We've got 23,000 plants waiting for us, and I'm not quite sure how many days it's gonna take. It could be anywhere from five to eight days we'll be there. And it was cool, we took the ferry across from Milwaukee to Michigan, and then we drove about three and a half hours to Detroit, got to Belle Isle, and uh, we're Austin Eyshide met us there from Chicago and Laura from Head of Horticulture at Lurie Garden. And this is what we found. We found the grading done. Uh, the beds were prepped and ready to go. And we just started laying out the plants and spray painting. And you'll see the rest of it on the next few episodes of how we follow through with the painting, the planting, and the finishing. And, and actually we planted 23,000 plants in three and a half days. So that was exciting. So let's take it from here and, and follow through on, on how we did all this. Um, I'm here with Roy and we're <laughs> installing the um, Pete Adolf Garden in Detroit and it's raining. Oh, it's up. So Roy, Roy, you just got done painting and now you have to spray paint again. Yeah, the rain came down pretty heavily for about, uh, well, about 35 minutes. It's lightening up, still raining, but these are things that you don't expect and don't want, but happen and actually you can't really do anything about it. So you have to say, okay, we can handle this well. We'll get on with it. I'm gonna have to repaint some of the areas, maybe not that much, and then we'll keep moving forward. And things you don't plan for, but yet this adds, uh, it adds some excitement to the project. Because where can we pick up? How do we move forward? And we're gonna get this done. The plants are gonna go on the ground and it's gonna be a beautiful peat out off garden. As you can see, we're spraying some of the beds and we're bringing the plants out right now, which is the most exciting part. We have three different styles at Pete Head. A is more a block-like planting and it has grasses that tie the patterns together. B is the grass matrix, mostly Spirobolus heterolepis. And C is various geometric figures we, that Pete used. And they're kind of interesting to lay out because nothing really is easy to measure. So I had to do a lot of uh, more intimate pacing and measuring to get each one to relate to each other as it existed on the plan. And I wasn't off by much. I really surprised myself at that, actually. I was probably four to six inches off on, on, as I ended, and I just readjusted back into the center of the garden, which is the easiest thing to do. As you can see how the geometric shapes change, inside the geometric shapes are smaller shapes of intimate plantings that will be supported by the larger groups. And there are some of the labels we're putting in. That's the Lictrum uh, Echolgifolium. Let's go over here, that's Aster Twilight. So that uh, every area is labeled, and then each little area, as you can see, is labeled also. And then when we bring the plants out, we lay them out and have the spacing that is required by each, each group of plants. So it's, it's a lot of fun, actually. And it takes, uh, it takes some thinking and planning and also some rearranging as we plant too to make sure they blend in casually together to create a, a, a mingled uh, good look. So as you can see there, she was the one doing all the labeling, it's the labeling station. So what we'll do, we'll, we'll walk around and we'll look at some other patterns later that uh, we're planting. We'll look at the grass matrix and the black ones later. Thank you. Okay, hey Austin, we're in Detroit at Belle Isle. What are, you doing? what are you doing now, Austin? Well, we are starting to lay out the plants, and the first layer that we have here is a matrix design that Pete designed. He did three different uh, design stamps, and one of them is a matrix with Spirobolus, which is the yellow here. Mm -hmm. And then there's blocks, and uh, which is the larger areas, and then the individuals that are going through the Spirobolus, which will flow with the grass seed heads and look oh, really cool. awesome and natural. And so, as you can see here, Let's we have look. Yeah, blocks of Amsonia hubrechtii, and we've got Helenium morheim beauty, Pycnanthemum, and the, the Echinops. And then you can see here, we've got smaller groups of seven of the Proschia kind of naturally, you know, flowing through, mm -hmm. putting three together, and an individual one over here, and a couple over there. And the gaps are Sprobolus. Yep, and the rest of Sprobolus. That's very cool. Let's take a quick look over here. Brent. All right. Brent's here from Intrinsic. Oh, what are you doing now, Brent? Calumet 
the Nepeta Nepeta with the Orangium Borgatii. Okay, cool. So you're, you're, and you dropped some plants off too today, didn't you? We did. We brought uh, Dancing Wind, Big Blue Stem. Oh, cool. They're all good. Salvia Pertensis, Rhapsody in Blue. Uh huh. And uh, Veronica Pink Edelin. Oh, good. Somewhere is, is I'll take a look, everyone. These are the patterns getting laid out. We'll visit later. They're going to start planting tomorrow, so they're putting the patterns in. So we've got a lot to do, but it's, it's a good beginning. Hi, everybody. Right, everybody. Back at Bell Isle, we're with Austin. So Austin, what are you doing now? So now that we have everything planted, that was a block or um, scatter plants um, in larger groups throughout this area. And now we're putting the ultimate scatter plant that's going everywhere. Uh, so there was about a hundred of these that are going in here. This is Pulsatilla vulgaris, and okay. this will be sprinkled throughout the Spirobolus matrix. And so I'm putting them with plants like Veronicastrum or um, asters that are later season blooming plants. And uh -huh. so this will be the first thing to come up in the spring with the bulbs and flower and have a beautiful and, seed and this, head. This was on Pete's plan, but you're yeah. doing it more emotionally. Yep. So he's, he put okay. dots all over to say that 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 it goes in the bed and is uh -huh. sprinkled. But I'm pairing it with and compa with companion plants that maybe will be later blooming or later um, emerging from the ground to make sure that we have something covering the ground for weed suppression and for early spring color. And the cool part is, is you have to have knowledge of plants to do this. So it's having this awareness of plants, who they're gonna be with, how you're gonna place them, and having that emotional way of being to do it. That's very cool. That's right, yeah. Thanks. Can I watch, can I, we watch you walk through? I'll sure. See you place some. We have a small group of Veronicastrum here, so I'm going to put a few there, and then we'll have this Parabolus kind of flowing through to add that movement through that group of Veronicastrum Challenger. And then I will put them through the Flomus here. That's an, okay. also another um, summer bloomer, so that'll be a nice pop of color coming up through right. the middle right. of the Flomus. Good. And then another scatter plant here we have is a Geranium. Renardi. Renardi. That's Renardi. Yeah, Renardi. Cool. So a nice fuzzy small leaf, and that will uh -huh. also be a nice pop of spring color okay. in small groups. And that's basically where you're at now. You got the, the, the patterns in, yep. you're scattering plants, and then the sprobolus. The sprobolus plug will go in next, and then the crew will come back through and do a sweep and one last planting. Very good. All right. Thanks, Austin. Okay, we'll care. see you soon. Bye. Bye, everybody. I thought I'd show you a quick community relationship development here. And it's looking at the growth rate and growth habit of two particular plants Pete has in a combination. This is Sparablus heterolepis. It was planted in a uh, two and a half inch plug. And this is Monarda bradburiana. Now the Sparablus heterolepis will, is a slower grower and will reach its mature width in about three to four years. And its mature width is going to get 24 to 30 inches wide and its height of foliage is going to be about 15 inches and it's going to be arching over to that 24 inch width. Now the Renarda bradburiana is going to grow much quicker than the Sparablus and cover about uh, 16 to 18 inches in width the second year. And you're probably wondering, well, won't that cover up the Sparablus? And you're right, it will. But the Sparablus has all these little ways, this narrow foliage to collect light. So it will lean in many directions and be able to collect light to keep the crown of the plant strong in all these different directions. And eventually, possibly one of the sprobluses at the end here, or in the right here, might get shaded out. But that's okay because there's a higher percentage of sprobulus in the bed than Monarda. So the sprobulus will actually sort itself out at, a, at the right percentage and mix well, as you can see in here, with the Monarda bradburiana. So if one or two sprobulus do get shaded out by the early growth of the Monarda, that's okay. The percentage of plants, again, is higher, more sporobulus than Monarda. Now, if we were working in another direction and we had an old bed of sporobulus, the sporobulus would be very large, and you would have to dig out three or four sporobulus to put a large group of Monarda in, because if you put a small group of Monarda in the sporobulus, the foliage would get so big the following year, it would shade out the Monarda. So you can see you're working in two different directions with two different mindsets. 
when you're working with two young plants, you look at the growth rate and growth habit, who's the fastest, who's the slowest, who gets larger quicker, like the Monardo the Sporobolus. You look at the percentage, you put a higher percentage of Sporobolus in because they will be a little slower initially. And then if one or two get covered up, don't worry about it. Just move on and enjoy the other parts of the garden. And then each plant will have a way of collecting light and then living healthy with each other for an extended period of time. All right, thanks everybody. I hope this helped. If you have any comments, please let me know and I'll try to get back to you. Thanks. See you soon. Bye. Last day. We're leaving this afternoon. Unbelievable. How do you feel, Roy? I feel real good. It's crazy, huh? Got all how many plants got planted? I think there's about twenty three thousand. I was just walking around now looking at the plants that were watered last night, the spot watering. They all perked up well. So we have to think about the drainage here because it's an elevated garden. About 24 inches of soil, that soil mix over gravel that has drainage tile and take it out to the wetland. So we're just looking at how well the soil is draining right now. It looks good. I mean, it's, yeah. it's been an amazing experience mm -hmm. pushing out 20. How many? 20, 20, 23,000 3, plants. 3,000 plants planted. And they all still, every plant still believes it's in a container <laughs> because they have not rooted into the earth. It'll take about three to six weeks yet. Here's a good perspective of Pete's garden designs for the Bell Isle project. There's three styles of planting Pete initiated into this. There's the A pattern, which was uh, more of a block planting. There was the B pattern, which was a matrix of grasses, Barabolus heterolepus, that was uh, binding together various small patterns within the grass and then there was the various geometric shapes the C pattern and you can see they were offset uh, sometimes two together sometimes one another and then another then just repeating the patterns so he repeated the patterns in in really uh, very thoughtful ways and it was very exciting to lay each of these out and it's actually very exciting for me to see them from this perspective you can see the different mingling and, and see how Pete observed the plants, not just from the ground, but also overlooking, overlooking the patterns as he lays them out. So I had a great time doing this. So thanks a lot. And uh, I, hope, I hope you can see a lot of things in this for yourself when you create your own gardens and, create, and have your own style of composition. All right, see you later.